Welcome to the AI for You Cafe for live presentations around AI. As always, we are waiting a little bit until all the participants are coming in. Thank you for joining us today. In this sunny weather here in Cologne, it's very sunny. With us today is Mia Haidaktu from DLR. Thank you for being with us. Hi, Mia. Hello, good afternoon. I will introduce you very soon. <laughs> uh, the theme today is Candela Earth Observation Data Mining Tools, a tutorial. And my name is Carmen McWilliams, and I'm the moderator and organizer of this cafe session. And I'm the director of the company Grassroots Arts, which is a partner in the AI for You project funded by the European Commission. Please take notice that the session will be recorded. The link for the recording you will find later on the AI for You YouTube channel if MIAI uh, allows it afterwards and gives the permission to publish it. No confidential information shall be shared in this cafe. All speakers express their personal views and opinions. This is not necessarily the official AI for You project opinion. Again, for somebody who has been here for the first time, what is this cafe about? This cafe is an online forum to gain insight into the European AI scene and participants get to share a chance to share knowledge and experiences and meet stakeholders from various areas of AI research and applications. So I, I was asked often by you, can I share this invitation when I get one by email? Yes, yes, this is a public uh, live cafe. Please share it in a network to friends or colleagues who are interested in AI topics. It's important AI topics. We are talking not about something else here. And it's interactive. Uh, so you may ask questions to Miai. He will make his live presentation for 30, about 30 minutes. And then afterwards, he will take your questions. I will read them to Miai. So please type them in the chat. Um, there's a chat on the right side. In the control panel called question chat. Uh, if you also wish, you can also raise your hand and then you have the audio function, which then you can even ask the questions directly. Um, so now we come to the main point to me. I, <laughs> I will introduce him. Uh, Shortly, Mihai Dakto received his master and PhD degrees in electronics and telecommunications from University Politecna Bucharest in Romania uh, in 78 and 86. And 99, he received the title of Habilitation à Diriger de Recherche in Computer Science from the University Louis Pasteur in Strasbourg, France. And currently, he is senior scientist in data intelligence and knowledge discovery research group leader with the Remote Sensing Technology Institute IMF of the German Aerospace Center DLR in Oberpfaffenhofen and professor with the Department of Applied Electronics and Information Engineering Faculty of Electronics, Telecommunication and Information Technology, UPB. His interests are in data science, machine learning and artificial intelligence and computational imaging for space applications. He is involved in big data from European Space, ESA, NASA, and national research program, programs and projects. He is a member of the ESA Big Data from Space Working Group. So there's many, many more things to say, <laughs> but I'm now handing over to Mia himself. I will make you the moderator, Mia. So I change it and then you can speak for yourself. And again, Thank you that you're here and welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. Mm -hmm. Good day, everyone, and thank you for attending this presentation. And I will go straight to the slides. Mm -hmm. I to organize my screen. Yeah, I see them. Can yeah. along. Yes, perfect. Yeah. Today's topic is uh, Earth Observation Data Mining, uh, presentation of tools, uh, tutorial-like uh, presentation. I uh, organize a material uh, introducing the Candela, an Horizon 2020 project. 
uh, an introduction about uh, machine learning and data mining and uh, uh, continuing with uh, details on architecture and the function and operation advantages of data mining as a component of artificial intelligence in uh, past observation, concluding with a demo of the tool. Now the Candela. So Candela, it is an uh, uh, Horizon uh, 2020 uh, project. Copernicus Access Platform Intermediate Layers Small Scale Demonstrator. Uh, Copernicus program is uh, uh, operating uh, high, highly technological uh, advanced uh, Earth observation sensors in space, multispectral synthetic aperture radar, atmospheric. Uh, the novelty and uh, the great impact of Copernicus, in addition to the high technology of the sensors, it is the open and free access of the data. The technology uh, provides acquisition rates of uh, 100 of terabytes per day. This resulted in a huge uh, volume of data, also an important diversity of the data because of diversity of the sensors. With a high rate, uh, multi-temporal coverage of uh, global uh, uh, Earth. This results in big data, and uh, big data means collecting data, but big data means also technologies to exploit the data. The objective of the Candela project, it is uh, to uh, develop a system which uh, is operating algorithms and paradigms for accessing, uh, putting uh, accent on artificial intelligence like discovery and processing information, and delivering this information and knowledge to users of their observation data. Uh, the kernel, the core, it is uh, uh, information retrieval, uh, data mining, data mining based on machine learning uh, techniques. Definitely, that relies also on interoperability uh, in such a way to take advantage of all the assets that exist in our observation and to have an impact uh, uh, valorizing, uh, increasing the economic uh, impact of uh, air observation application. Another important uh, uh, concept in uh, the Candela Horizon 2020 project it is a reuse and openness. So the platform aims to become as open as possible. At least the data mining tools today, they will be fully open uh, for access. These tools, they um, have uh, uh, evolution and uh, evolution in the sense of scientific uh, uh, contact of the algorithms which are integrated, but evolution in the sense of technology readiness level. So today it's operational. Uh, this uh, high technology readiness level, uh, it is an asset of uh, 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 extremely uh, intensive engineering work, but also of collecting uh, detailed requirement from the Earth Observation User Committee. And that is very important in artificial intelligence because it is allowed to drive artificial intelligence to practical uh, problems. Inside machine learning. Machine learning uh, is covering, among other topics, uh, supervised learning. In the supervised learning, uh, in a simplified way, we have to deal with uh, two steps. In the first step, the training, we have to use uh, labeled data, a pre labeled data. In the example, in the bottom, there are, let's say, uh, several classes like uh, water, volcanoes, uh, forest. Uh, this data is very important. So some, somehow in uh, artificial intelligence, the training data, it is as important as the algorithm itself. So generating meaningful training data, carefully designed, is very important because the machine learning is learning is generating the data model, the model which will be used for classification from this data. So in the first step, the training data set is presented to the machine as the machine is learning, is generating a model of this data. In the second step, the classification, the unknown data, it is presented to the machine, and the machine is using the previously learned model to label, to assign unknown data to the classes which have been defined. So we have a process of learning and data applying the body of knowledge, let's say as a model, it's a body of knowledge which was created, 
and apply to a very large uh, data set and uh, sort this data according to this abstracted uh, knowledge. Uh, in artificial intelligence, among other kind of uh, machine learning, we have active learning. So active learning is a very particular uh, procedure in which the machine is interactively interrogating the user. The user is an information source. It's interrogating the user to label new data points with a desired output. So active learning is a dialogue. So it's different from the previous, uh, let's say, uh, usual um, two steps, uh, machine learning, training, and classifying. Uh, it's a dialogue. The user is uh, examining the data. Uh, for instance, in the bottom, uh, uh, he's selecting, giving uh, green, a positive example, volcanoes, and he indicates uh, he's not interested in water or forest or other classes. So he's separating the data in data of interest and data of, uh, out of the interest of the user, so positive and negative examples, the dialogue. The machine understands uh, his intention and create incrementally a model and presents to the user the result of sorting data. This dialogue allows to uh, select the data in a better way. To understand uh, this, uh, the advantages of active learning, I uh, make a, a short comparison using uh, five uh, criteria, the training data volume, the trained data volume, number of classing, classification accuracy, and training speed. And comparing the shallows, uh, say, uh, let's call it uh, classical machine learning, deep learning, which is very popular and is dominating the research area in artificial intelligence in the last two years, and the active learning, which is implemented in a Candela data mining uh, tool. So regarding the training data volume, uh, the training data is a data which was previously labeled, in classical uh, machine learning, this uh, volume of train, training data uh, already labeled, now in Python data is one, it's order of uh, gigabytes. Uh, in deep learning, the volume is growing, it's uh, really big data, this could go to petabytes level. In active learning, the training data, the known data, the reference data, which should be presented for generation as a model, is very small. It's uh, uh, under kilobytes. It's very, very small, few samples of data. That is a huge advantage, mainly in remote sensing, because in remote sensing, we do not have labeled data. Also, labeled data is very specific for every application and for every sensor, and have many, many sensors and many, many applications. And uh, that means having a small training data set, which is needed. This means the training data set can be verified carefully for the data. Training data is very important. Training data is as important as the algorithm, the classification algorithm itself. So active learning compared to this shallow machine learning and deep learning is using an extremely, extremely small training data. Advantage in our observation, it is this training data can be verified. This means it's increasing the degree of trust in the model which was generating in the classification. The second criteria for comparison is a trained data volume, the volume of unknown data which we want to explore, we want to classify, to accept information. For the classical uh, machine learning, the volume of unknown data is generally in gigabytes to terabytes. Deep learning definitely it's uh, going in direction of big data uh, petabytes. Uh, active learning uh, might be not completing deep learning, it remains at level terabytes, gigabytes, terabytes. But uh, compared to the ratio in between the training and the unknown data which will be classified, this ratio is huge. So this ratio is beating uh, the deep learning. So active learning in terms of the power to generate new level data, it's much more uh, uh, efficient compared to deep learning and definitely with a shallow uh, classic machine learning. In terms of number of classes, uh, in uh, shallow machine learning, uh, number of classes is tens, maximum 100. 
deep learning is the same, it could be uh, around 100 classes which could be extracted from uh, our unknown data. In active learning, the number of classes, it is not defined, it's open, it's defined by the user. And that is again, it's an important advantage in uh, as observation. Uh, if we are uh, using a pre-trained uh, data set in which we have, let's say, uh, 10 classes, uh, uh, two classes of uh, agriculture crops, uh, uh, three classes of uh, uh, forest uh, uh, cover, uh, land cover, uh, urban areas, for instance. Uh, in the application, as a model, it's learning only these categories, and the unknown data is explored only for these categories. So both fellow and deep learning, they are uh, limited in the number of classes. And another limitation is that these classes are fixed. So unknown data is explored only for this predefined trend data. In active learning, the classes are defined by the user. They are open. And actually, remote sensing and artificial intelligence, they have a common objective. So remote sensing is uh, to investigate remote areas where you do not have information by other means. These are unknown areas. You could have unexpected classes and you need to discover this. Artificial intelligence has the same objective in general for all areas, not only for observation. Artificial intelligence should reveal uh, uh, hidden information in large form of data, reveal and explain it. And active learning is a tool which is open for this. It's adapting to the user, uh, allows the user to discover classes and to label classes. Uh, in uh, general, as a figure in um, a very high resolution data, as Terrasa Rix, they have a radar at one meter, the German mission. Uh, we have uh, about 1,000 classes for urban areas. Uh, in uh, Sentinel 2, we go to up to 100 classes up to now, but this classes is opened, and these classes again, they depend, adapted to their, uh, depending on the conjecture of so the user. Another criteria for comparison of uh, this method is uh, classification accuracy. Uh, classical, shallow machine learning, in average, is 85, could be better. It's uh, taken from the state of art uh, applications. Deep learning is getting better, uh, in average, 90%. Uh, active learning, in average, 85%, remains, let's say, uh, not so competitive as deep learning. But because of the flexibility, agility of the method, uh, it's uh, extremely useful. The training speed, which is a criteria, last criteria in this comparison, uh, for um, our shallow machine learning, it's uh, uh, hours, or less than one hour. Deep learning depends on resources, but even on a, a large, uh, on a high performance computing facilities, uh, that could last days for training and generating the model. Active learning is very fast. It's a second three minutes. It is real time to the speed of reaction of the user. So it's a dialogue, clicking with the mouse on the image, getting the response, responding again, clicking again on the screen, on the image, indicating positive, negative example, and the answer is coming. So it's a very fast. And this speed uh, is very important because it uh, allows to explore large volume of the data in a very flexible way, discover new information and knowledge. What is data mining? Data mining is a process of discovering patterns in big data and is based by a synergy fusion of uh, methods in machine learning statistics and uh, database uh, techniques. Machine learning, because uh, we have to learn models, relations, so data mining means discovering mainly relation among the entities in the data. Statistic, because we need to analyze the models are statistical. The uh, analytical, the data is a statistical measure. And we need database techniques in order to be able to very fast manage, structure, huge amount of data. In camera projects, the data mining or rest observation implements two main functions. The first is image search and semantic annotation, which aim to discover and semantically label the first observation image. This is an image information mining, it's an active learning. It's an image information mining because it refers 
to the basic content in the image. The content in the spectral signatures or in the radar signature of the sensor. It is semantic and that is very important because it's recording in the database not only a label, an abstract label, but it's uh, uh, indicating the semantic used by the user. And this allows to share information and knowledge. Semantic is very important in communicating the results in the side of communities. The second uh, function of data mining in Earth observation is a multi knowledge query. It aims as a knowledge extraction from the AO product, including metadata in the image, like location, time of acquisition, uh, sensor uh, uh, imaging modes, and all the metadata of the sensor sorry, product, and also including the image semantic levels, which are generated by the user. They are depending on the application or the image descriptors extracted for this purpose. So that is a multimodal query uh, because it's operating not only on the image, but also on semantic and uh, on uh, textual and uh, numerical descriptors. And uh, this is based on uh, database technologies as uh, SQL. So what is in the data mining tool in uh, Candela? So we have, in principle, uh, a module for annotation interface, a database management system, a multi-knowledge query, an image search and semantic annotation, which are implementing the data mining functions. These are interactive uh, modules supported by uh, human communication machines. And in addition, uh, important for artificial intelligence, we have a system validation module in the sense that the results which are produced by data mining, they are not only classes or semantic labels, they are accompanied by a measure of trust, a certitude. We start with the Earth of the product, which could be a single capital radar or a multi spectral uh, Sentinel 1 or Sentinel 2 product, for instance. This product it is processed and uh, it is cut. It. Uh, generate a partition in tiles. So tiles are uh, typically in between, uh, let's say, maximum 300 by 300 pixels to uh, 30, 25 by 25 pixels, a multi grid uh, tiling. Uh, each of the tiles is processed to extract signal, descriptor, spectral signatures, or CD uh, capture uh, other signatures, or image parameters like uh, texture or automatical descriptors and all this information it is uh, stored and managed by the database. So the semantic catalog it's recording the semantic generated by the users of the system which they are uh, typical classes uh, users they, uh, they can find they can discover in the satellite images like park uh, agriculture sea airport. Metadata which is very important, all the metadata from the product, from the SOC product, it is recorded in the database because it's important to understand all the data, including uh, geographical location, time, and uh, sense of information. The uh, human machine communication, which enable to operate the system, they present the product and the tiles, and also the result of the uh, classification, which is uh, marked in, uh, in blue. These modules, algorithms, and uh, database technology, it is integrated in uh, the Candela platform developed by Atos. The Candela platform access DIAS, uh, Creo DIAS, uh, using Sentinel-1 and Sentinel-2 uh, products. There are two containers, one which is a data model generation, which is a tiling the products, extracting the metadata and the basic attributes, so features and descriptors of the image. And uh, uh, another container with a data mining database, which is a MonoDB uh, database, which is a tiling the relation database uh, to operate with uh, active learning. Uh, these are uh, accompanied by a number of uh, uh, interfaces uh, like uh, uh, Jupyter Lab, which are connecting uh, to uh, an uh, interactive part. 
technology discovery interface the human machine communication, uh, which is operated by the user and communicates with the platform. So we disconnect in this uh, operational data mining from the classical use of a platform and uh, uh, Docker's or uh, uh, Jupyter notebooks, which are uh, processing on the batch and they are operating um, uh, in uh, with the scripts. We go to a high level operation via human machine communication and intelligent way to access data. And also very simple. Data mining in action. The first uh, step in, uh, in uh, operating with data mining, it is searching in DIAS. In Claudius, in a particular case of Candela, searching the products uh, and loading the data. So, this is an example of searching Sentinel 2 data on the area of Munich uh, with a cloud cover and uh, giving some information, for instance, the uh, time window for the execution. So, query in DIAS result in a, a 24 products which have been uh, uh, extracted, they are listed. The user is selecting the product and is starting the data model generation, in which has to indicate the size of the tiles, 120 pixels by 120 pixels. Uh, for resolution of 10 meters, that means 1.2 by 1.2 kilometer area on the ground. Number of grid levels, the tiles are actually uh, cut it in this case in a, a squares of 120 by 120 pixels, 1.2 by 1 kilometer. And later they are again uh, uh, split it in a, a, a final grid of 60 by 60 pixels and in another final grid of 30 by 30 pixels. In such a way that it's possible to obtain a classification of mapping of the class in a finer spatial grid, but also to obtain uh, diversity in the semantic. A simple example, on an area on the ground of 1.2 by 1.2 kilometers, uh, we have several objects. We can have a group of houses, uh, a highway, uh, a lake. And if we make the semantic annotation as a level of a patch of 120 by 120 pixels, we will call this residential area. So semantically, it's a residential area. When we make the partition in smaller patches of 60 by 60, we obtain four patches. One contains a lake, one contains the houses, one the highway. And the semantic attached to these patches is different. It's a lake, highway, uh, uh, road, uh, and uh, uh, houses. So the partitions, a multi-grid approach, it, uh, has uh, two advantages, two objectives, to have better localization in space and uh, diversification of the semantic uh, levels. We indicate the type of the product for the ingestion. Uh, we identify the type of features to be extracted. Uh, this is very important. Uh, we operate with uh, features like uh, texture descriptor, uh, like uh, Gabor or Weber descriptors, or with uh, multi spectral histograms. Uh, the textual descriptors are referred to spatial information and they are very strong for the urban area or the forest. The uh, spectral features is are very important in applications which are going to physical models like uh, water quality, agriculture, because in the spectral indices we obtain physical uh, information about the scene. Uh, it's possible at the data ingestion to select the bands in this example have been only the 10 meter bands of Sentinel 2 selected, as the system can make any combination of using all the uh, certain bands of the sensor or, or any other sensor combination adapting to the type of uh, uh, sensor. Uh, when the data generation was uh, running, uh, the result it is stored in the database, in the tables. So each of the feature has a, a, a table, table for semantic features. Uh, metadata and uh, the information in the database is now operated by a human computer interface uh, which behind has the artificial intelligence, the active learning. 
as a, a graphical user operation is based on a number of uh, simple functions. So a query as a database, a training, which are, it's activating a support vector machine, uh, in synergy as a Bayesian uh, decision. The changes are grid level, so we can uh, work in on 120 or uh, 60 by 60 or uh, 30 by 30 pixels. So this grid level can be defined as a data ingestion. Uh, loading uh, our fetches, it's a visual browsing of the result of the query. If you want, it's a measurable uh, function. Uh, operation to ingest in the database the result as a classification as a semantic level, which later can be used in queries by SQL. Uh, operating going in between uh, images, because we operate with many images in a stack uh, on the interface. Uh, image ID, uh, reset on the, this layer, reset all the training, uh, show the training samples, it's a reminder, uh, export the notation, and leading to the function to benchmark the measure. So in the system, uh, uh, there are already ingested uh, uh, labeled data set, or the user can create its own labeled data set in such a way to allow uh, the benchmark and to uh, generate the uh, quality measure for the classification, which is a recall or uh, other classification indices. How the interface it is operated? The interface is operated with the left and the right mouse buttons. The left indicates positive example, the target of our classification, water bodies, this example, and the negative, the mouse click on this image, the different classes which are distinct from the target of the classification. So in this example, we want to obtain a classification a labeling of water bodies. We give a positive example and a negative example, and the system it's grouping together all water bodies and it's separating from other kind of uh, structures. The system is uh, grouping this in, let's say, an intelligent way. In the sense, these are the most relevant patches relative to the target, to the model which is trained. And these are the most ambiguous. This uh, presentation and uh, grouping the children of the machine learning in a, a most relevant and most ambiguous is very important. Uh, the user is looking in among the most relevant, is browsing them and can find easily uh, examples which are negative examples. It's easy to filter out uh, to correct the model. And the most ambiguous, they allow to detect the positive examples which are wrongly classified. So browsing on this, selecting on this uh, sorted data, the user is easily correcting the training. During the training, it's uh, using uh, three to 10 samples per uh, interaction. And the number of interaction, it's uh, three to five interactions. Uh, definitely the result of the classification depends on the selection. However, because this number of samples is very small, the user can control them, can decide about the uh, training data set in the active learning part. Uh, in the second iteration, the user gives another positive, another negative examples. And at the end, when he's satisfied with the quality of the grouping of the labeling, he's inserting the label in the database and the database will create a link to all the patches in all the products which contain this um, label in the data set which was operated in the session of uh, uh, labeling. Further, these labels can, can be accessed by SQL and they can um, uh, be object of uh, multimodal queries and technology discovery. In the benchmark function, uh, uh, for the uh, classes which are in the reference data set, 
uh, like manual density or uh, C. Uh, the system is automatically computing uh, accuracy of measure, which is recall, and also is presenting uh, the calls for the procedure recall and uh, the log. The same for the, uh, each of the fields. So this is important to have only the verification for the benchmark. It's a very important operation in artificial intelligence. Demonstration. So we have a Sentinel-2 image. We indicate the mouse with uh, clicking left positive and uh, right negative mouse. For example, the target was the forest, which is the area covering this part of the image. Negative example has been given to separate from the cloud and other kind of vegetation uh, in the fields. In this window, it has the most relevant, which shows it's actually the system already understood quite well in the class and it separates from other kind of vegetation and land cover here. However, in the first iteration, there are still false allowed that was negative. It's why it's positive to examine the image to evaluate uh, which is the amount of data which is correctly modeled and examine the most relevant and the most ambiguous. So yeah, I, can... I, it's me, Carmen. Hi, hi, I'm just disturbing. I think you may, may uh, the quality of your audio is really going out. And so maybe the video, the trick is maybe you switch the video yourself. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I can close. I tell you what happened. My computer got overheated and the fence started. Okay. <laughs> so uh, this, this is a source of noise, 30 seconds. Um, okay. Now, in the process, the user continues okay. to give a negative example. In between, he goes to the next grid from 120 to 60 by 60. So has a final grid. And at this point, is um, uh, satisfied, let's say, with uh, precision of the classification. He's labeling the data, sends the labels to the database, and the labels of 120 pixels by 120 pixels and uh, 60 by 60 pixels are now indexed in the database and they can be further uh, analyzed quantitatively or semantically together with all the other related database uh, information. So I would conclude uh, in here with a demonstration and a presentation, acknowledging the support of my uh, colleagues, Dr. Villao and uh, Dr. Kevin Department of the uh, DLR in the data intelligence and knowledge discovery uh, team. Thank you for your attention and uh, definitely I'm open to answer questions, trying to cover the thermal noise of the computer. Okay. Thank you, Guy. Sorry for interrupting you, but it there was like a, there is a little issue with the audio sometimes when many people are in the same time using the internet. It's always the same. So thank you very much for this very engaging talk, and um, I hope you as participants also have questions. Please write them in because Mia is now there. You can ask it now. Write please, in the text box. I start, uh, as always. <laughs> um, I have a question, um, again, which I keep asking. I'm talking for all the SMEs and PhD students and researchers out there. How can I access this platform? Uh, how, can I use it as an external person? Or is it available? How? Yes, so in this moment we have uh, a version of the platform. No, the platform it is in the frame of the project and it's operated by Athos. Athos is open to uh, discuss the use of the yeah. platform. In terms of the data mining tool, which is developed by DLR, we give the tool open source. So if it's, uh, in this moment, if someone is asking us, sending an email, uh, we respond and we will share the tool. At the end of the project, or, uh, at the end of this year, uh, the tool will be on the Candela platform. We also discuss maybe to uh, make this public on other platforms in the frame of all these 2020 projects. So the answer is yes, it's open source. In this moment, by request by any, anybody, and by the end of the project, that will be available. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it means like 
practically, I would now write you an email if I would be in somebody interested, and that would be processed by Atos and you, no? but I would write you an email. So if somebody in the audience wants to use it, the best way to write me or me I an email and I forward it to you. That's the way, right? Yes. Okay, so just to know. The second question was, will the presentation be available? Yes. Yes, sure. And good. Because yes, I did yes. wait, because there was um the question of moving out and and now comes more questions from the audience, from participants in Hi. How can we engage to use this system? Are you planning to evaluate it? This is the question from Katarina Salamova. The question is how can we engage to use the system? Are you planning to evaluate it? And let's see, maybe there was even a third one. In which direction? Yes, so we already uh, did uh, several evaluations. Yes. Okay. okay, you are, you go. <laughs> yes, okay. Uh, we already did uh, evaluation. Evaluation is a growing spiral process because evaluation is a big data evaluation. So we evaluate the system in terms of uh, scalability with a lot of data. And we evaluate the system in terms of scalability with uh, variability of the data in different kinds of sensors. We've already, if someone is interesting, also can address me and I can present, I can send results which have been published until now in uh, the validation. We had several steps of validation already fulfilled. We are now in the phase in the Candela project, in the Horizon 2020 project, uh, in the phase of uh, finalizing the tool and proceeding with uh, uh, validation of the tool, uh, both in terms of machine learning, artificial intelligence, and also a validation of the users. The results will be published uh, in the technical notes, documents of the project by the end of the project, and also in a publication which are uh, under the preparation. Again, uh, for details, I am I'm very glad to be in contact with the person which are. Uh, the validation goes again, I want to stress, in terms of uh, machine learning, precision recall, uh, and also in terms of uh, satisfaction with the users, which are different criteria. Okay, thanks. Katarina says thanks. <laughs> thanks, Katarina. And uh, and uh, here comes Marcelo Reinaldo de Sousa. Hello, Marcelo. Great to see you here. Carmen, this platform Copernicus, which I've been taking a look at, is worldwide used? Question mark. Is this Copernicus worldwide used? Yes. Yes. Uh, Copernicus data is uh, free and open for everyone around the world. The data is accessible on the European Space Agency uh, hub. So searching on ESA Copernicus hub and it's free access to any kind of data all around the world. And uh, if you look in uh, publications, you know, also, which are very much visible, uh, there are publications coming from uh, China to Alaska, from Australia, to Hawaii, people are using the data. For, and uh, this is completely free, completely open. For any kind of application, there's no restriction. Great. Great. And now, uh, Jose, Jose Maria Lazaro. Any plans to further develop Candela after the end of H2020 project? Yes, we always do this. Because uh, our investment in our space technologies is very high. And uh, we try always uh, to continue the development. And generally, at the end of a project, we have uh, two branches. One branch is a tool which was developed in the project, as is the case now, will become open source. And we are glad to work uh, in other projects or in application with people or either to uh, promote, to help people without being us involved directly, but to help people uh, open source if you want, to help people to develop the project, other applications. On our side, we are interested sometimes to have feedback because we learn from uh, applications. 
and uh, the second uh, uh, branch uh, at the end of the project including this candela we learned from uh, the users and we continue to renew to update the basic artificial intelligence uh, machine learning uh, statistical information theory algorithms which are in the tool even the tool itself and to go to the next generation of tool this tool is uh, already in a series of uh, evolution of data mining tools uh, in the last 10 years so we had already the, the third version so every say three four years we issue a new version of the tool okay thank you uh, now i have a question <laughs> um that's just more because i'm interested uh, in these difficult times i'm um, I'm asking the same question. As I was in, um, in the Global Forum of AI for Humanity in Paris last year, there was like the G7 group and um, there was the idea to use AI for solving the societal and sustainable development goals of 2030. And there was the idea also to fight with AI, climate change and fight health problems like, for example, Corona in the moment. That's why I'm coming to this and prevent hunger. Uh, do you see like AI, I'm just asking this directly, do you see AI could help to solve environmental problems because you do Earth observation? Do you think that? Yes, yes. I, I, uh, I'm not thinking this. Uh, we are doing this, not myself, but also myself and my group, my colleagues, the DLR, ESA and other teams. We are, we are a community. Uh, why? Because uh, the climate uh, it's actually a big data, uh, a big data not only in the sense of uh, Copernicus, beyond Copernicus, because there are much more uh, data types, much more sensors which are used in our uh, understanding the environment. Uh, the last years, uh, it happened that uh, uh, climate is changing dramatically, and mm -hmm. this happened, it, unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know, it's better I don't comment, uh, with a moment when technology uh, allows to process this data. So in the past mm -hmm. uh, five, ten years ago, processing such a huge volume of diverse type of data was not possible. Today we can mm -hmm. do this. And mm -hmm. everything is now concentrated on doing this. Regarding the present uh, situation with the coronavirus, the pandemic, there are already teams which uh, they studied uh, climate, atmospheric condition in relation to the um, uh, uh, intensity of the pandemic in various countries. And uh, there are results which are already published. So, if one is uh, interested, there is a paper published a few days ago in mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, Okay, I, I don't have the title now, I, mean, I have it on my computer, but it is, if someone can ask me, uh, search in Archive, you'll find it. Yes. And, uh, and also, in a term of Earth observation, and somehow independently of the pandemic, uh, since a few years, the exposome uh, extended Earth observations of the climate, the climate change environment has an mm -hmm. impact on uh, human life behavior. Yeah. And uh, the exposome now, it's, uh, it's uh, not only a, a topic of uh, medical science or medicine, biology. Exposome mm -hmm. now, it's related to environment and environment is observed by uh, Earth observation. So Earth observation, artificial intelligence are tools mm -hmm. to support monitoring yes. your health. Yes, thank you. I, I'm totally with you and I see that a lot of people are now coming. <laughs> uh, yeah, Natalie says thanks for this question. Gerard Kennedy, can Candela be used in real-time applications where time delay is critical? No, good. Uh, I, uh, I'm, I, I try to answer. I, uh, if if uh, my answer is not satisfactory, uh, uh, today is there, um, access to the Sentinel data uh, from the acquisition from the uh, overpass of the satellite to obtain the data, it's a day. Could happen that in uh, next years with uh, laser communication systems, the access to the data to the user will be much faster hours. Mm -hmm. uh, with this active learning, the advantage it is that you can, as soon as you have the data, you process your, have to 
transform the data in a, uh, the database format and extracting the feature. Uh, this depends on the computation capacity everyone has. On a normal computer for the Sentinel um, uh, scene, uh, it takes half an hour. If you have a computer with uh, 20 CPUs, which is a normal computer today at the end, that could be much faster. So with a, let's say with a chip, uh, high performance computing uh, is possible to be in a processing chain which goes closer to uh, real time. So real time for the satellite was today one or two days until the uh, product is published on the ESA hub. In uh, probably one or two years, this time will be much uh, faster. Uh, and that's, that is changing the type of applications. So the time series, the time analysis is becoming a, a important scientific and business part. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I think, thank you also from Gerard. <laughs> thank you for your answer. And now I think we're closing in, but Marcelo comes back. He asked before about Copernicus and here's one more question. Uh, so one of the purposes of big data analysis in Copernicus project is predictive? Question mark? Um, in, uh, in the Candela project, project, particularly in the Candela project, uh, prediction is not uh, one of the strong parts. It is possible to use a prediction because in the Candela, I don't, I don't know about the entire project, not only as a data mining tool. Uh, in the Candela, there are components, functions, services uh, for uh, uh, change detection and multi-temporal analysis and also for managing uh, AO information with non-AO observation. So operating the Candela platform uh, is possible uh, to make, uh, to derive models which could support the prediction. In mm -hmm. terms of observation, uh, in particular for uh, time series analysis, prediction is becoming a very important topic and it is one of the challenges in artificial intelligence. It's a difficult, uh, task an algorithmic to have a good prediction. Yes, thank you. I think we are closing in the questions. If you, uh, I mean, not you, me, I, but you watching us, uh, if you have more questions, please forward it to me. I can forward it to me, I, or directly to me, I. Also, the recording, as I say, will be sent first to me, I, if he says it's okay, I publish it on YouTube. Uh, it will be in the I. I for you channel and um, if he allows me, he sends me his presentation and I please send me the request because we are really interested who would like to have it so please send it to us because the whole cafe is about matching and meeting people and somehow maybe have more interest uh, go in more details after this live session and to connect no? connect the people who have the same ideas about AI and are interested in the same theme. So now I again thank you and I announce shortly the next session where I, of course we ask you to come. The next session will be uh, next Wednesday because we are always trying to make it next Wednesday. One moment, I want to see if I can still see the next. Um, yes, I have it, sorry. Meant. It comes meant next one. Yes, the next live cafe session will this time be somehow different because we have a historian and Irish storyteller who will tell us about the origin of computing, about the father of computing, which is George Boole, if I pronounce it right, and one of the first who discovered that mathematics <laughs> can math can be used maybe to make intelligent machines in the future uh, we met him personally our cronan o dublin and his great storyteller he will lead us to original documents and letters from george bull so this is more something for everybody <laughs> so if you feel like inviting friends it is public and it shows also the variety of this cafe and have a nice day enjoy 
the sunshine and keep safe because we are still in the middle of a horrible health crisis, as we all know. And I thank you for you all joining us. Thank you, Mia, again. You are the <laughs> second <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thank you very much. I thank you, Carmen, for organizing this. You are doing this really fantastic. It's a fantastic job. I thank you for all that and this. And definitely, I'm glad to receive as much questions. And uh, take care and uh, keep healthy. Yes, thank you. See you soon. Eh? Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.